Howdy folks, welcome to the channel, brand new for 2020. My name's Dave, but I'll go by the alias DW. We started this channel as there's endless discussion on investing, cars, and consumer technology, but not a lot of solid specifics on the big picture or even basic price discovery. We're going to look at used car seller Carvana in detail today in the first episode. But first of all, allow me to talk about this channel. So the focus here at Rytar will be covering financial topics and investing ideas we find interesting, in addition to the basics of price discovery. Big changes so far in 2020, and up until now we saw firsthand just how consumers were almost being expected to overpay for almost everything in this everything bubble. To complicate matters, there was conflicting data almost everywhere you looked. And I think some consumers right now they're debating if that era has come to an end. Craziest thing I saw, people spending way above their means, usually on seven to eight year car loans. This headline last week on Millennial Money, BMW payment of 720 per month. I was in the market for a high-end, slightly pre-owned car a few months ago. Well, I had to pass because I couldn't get a deal that was good enough. I was asking myself back then, would the new Corvette start a pushdown effect on prices? And now I'm asking, can I get a much better deal later this year with this coming car deflation? And that's what this discovery process really boils down to, is asking the right questions to get the best value for your dollar and also for your financial safety if and when you do take out that big loan. There's a couple videos on the C8's effect on existing exotic car prices from the Fast Lane car and Speed Phenom. Hoovy's Garage even did a video on this last summer. Tyler always making these great Ferrari choices. We're going to come back to the C8 and car prices in a few episodes down the road. So in this first episode, we're going to look at used car seller Carvana in detail, and you'll start to see why they're often called the Amazon of used cars. Now how this will usually be structured here at Rytar for discovery on equities is to not even look at the price of the company's stock to begin with, but rather just the pros and cons of the business model. But before even doing that, we're just looking at the company and services offered. Personally, I wouldn't use Carvana, at least for how I purchase cars, but I'm not a typical car buyer, I'm an outlier. But a lot of normal people will use this to buy a lot of cars. Ask yourself this to start out, not why Carvana stock melted down in 2020. What caused Carvana stock to go up in 2019 and also now the second quarter of 2020? See if you can answer that one in the comments. Side note, I have no connection to the company. I don't personally know anyone who works there. My only link to Carvana is myself as a retail investor. As of the upload date of this video, I do have a position, about a thousand shares. And I promise that I won't flip out if you disagree with this take on Carvana. We always welcome new opinions here at Rytar. Everything today is so polarized, often you find yourself in a situation where there's no possibility of a dissenting voice. It's reminiscent of this scene from The Sopranos, where one broker challenges the Webistics pick, and then proceeds to get beaten up. The entire video clip is linked below in the description if you'd like to see it. And that's not an invitation to go out and buy shares today or tomorrow. You could be watching this in the future. The share price could be $22 a share or it could be $122. So I've been in the market for about 20 years and what we're seeing right now is somewhat of a trader's market. So please do your own research. If you're just starting out in stocks, feel free to ask for help in the comments before you invest. And there may be some brief pointers added in the next episode. This video will be split up into several sections. Part 1, the intro to the Rytar channel, what you're seeing right now. Part 2, a background summary of Carvana, which will happen right after this. And Part 3, the pros and cons of using Carvana's business model to buy a car. Lastly, in Part 4, I'll give some closing thoughts. You'll see the number up here change accordingly as to which section is currently being discussed. Down below in the description, you'll find the corresponding links within each section to match what you're seeing in case you want more info. Another purpose is to be an index of sorts if you want to rewatch the video in the future and skip around to certain parts. In the second video, I'll include my observations from successfully trading Carvana stock, which includes my trading techniques, followed by price support, resistance levels, and maybe some predictions. Carvana. The most drastic difference between their business model and a typical car dealership is evident in that last mile of their supply chain. You buy the car on their website, they'll deliver the vehicle directly to your door in a flatbed truck, or meet you in a predetermined location if you're outside the range of one of their delivery hubs. As of March 2020, 24 of these Carvana hubs feature the car vending machine, which also acts as a vertical showcase to display their vehicles. The buyer puts a token in and the building size vending machine extracts the specific car or truck they purchase, much like a matchbox car. They have an ad showing it here, also linked below. There's several on YouTube showing it in action. You have to love the lighting, and it ties in well with the consumer ethos. I'm going to buy what I want. I like to think of it as the inverse dealership model. Look at a typical new car dealer. One sees horizontal sprawl for inventory, service bays, courtesy shuttle, detail, and car wash. But this, the first time you see this crazy tower flying by at 80 miles an hour, you're going to ask yourself, what the hell is this thing? And for curious onlookers, this will later turn into a Google search. 
This vertical aesthetic is the polar opposite of what's expected for a car dealer. Carvana collaborated with four companies to bring this concept to life and to borrow some of the same engineering principles found in Asia and Europe. There's a detailed article by Core77 covering this entire backstory. It's linked below in the description in part two. This one pictured right here is in Tempe, Arizona on Scottsdale Road. And it looks like it holds around 40 cars, but it's actually 32 or 33. You're going to start seeing this thing pop up unexpectedly at times. I noticed it in the background of a dash cam video a few months ago. Carvana's headquarters are located back this way, a mile or two on the other side of SR202. I got stuck in rush hour traffic, not too far from here, right by Sun Devil Stadium. And wow, what a lot of fun that was. The overall benefit of using Carvana is the extra selection available to you. The trade-off is that you can't test drive the car or see it in person before delivery. And that's the biggest difference between Carvana and CarMax, with CarMax currently being the larger, more tenured competitor in the used car market. But as large as CarMax is, their business only constitutes about 2% of the entire U.S. used car market. Back to the website, we're going to bring up the company's bio page. The company was founded by Ernie Garcia III, Ryan Keaton, and Ben Houston in 2012 as a subsidiary of Drive Time. Ernie's the CEO. Looking at the board of directors, Dale Quayle is listed on there. His full-time gig is with Cerberus Capital, big player in real estate. Carvana was spun off of Drive Time in April 2017 with their IPO. Ernie's father, Ernest Garcia II, had co-founded Drive Time in 2002 and Drive Time was previously known as Ugly Duckling. Ugly Duckling had been around for quite a while, and even had an IPO in the 1990s. Certainly the marketing and general aesthetic was polished when it was rebranded as Drive Time, and Drive Time is still around today as a used car seller, primarily focused on the subprime market. Back to Carvana. The branding for the company was performed by Blind Society, based out of Scottsdale, who came up with a not-your-typical used car dealer angle. To be honest, I share some of the same views on marketing as, say, the late Bill Hicks, but this approach, even the logo of the car with a halo, is very tactical. Carvana's done a few TV ads now and put real production money into them. Some of the advantages of using Carvana include they'll accept your trade-in, great selection, they've added Porsche in the last few years, and many more makes and models than when I first started looking on there in 2015. Lots of Teslas are on there now too. CarMax stopped selling Teslas in late 2019 for reasons not known. Carvana allows referrals of $500 off your purchase. You can pre-purchase and cancel if you change your mind. There's no sleazy salespeople trying to push you into something you either don't want or cannot afford. If you've ever seen the movie Suckers, which covers aggressive car selling tactics in detail, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We tried to find a short clip to play from this movie, but all the best ones were R-rated. There's several on YouTube you can search out. In this scene, the sales manager is reminding his minions about the importance of utilizing the four square sales sheet with the goal of essentially shaming the customer, putting them on the defensive, and immediately shifting focus from the trade-in value to a sizable down payment, around $11,000. Marco from Whiteboard Finance did a brilliant analysis on this sales tactic about a year ago. Not every car dealer is going to use this to screw you over, but a sleazy one certainly will. So you need to be mindful of all the tricks that they might play on you, starting with box one, which would typically be the value of your trade-in. There's a scene near the beginning of the Omega Man where Charlton Heston's character is being critical of the dealer's trade-in value. This was just a reminder of the anxiety consumers could anticipate when dealing with a car buying process, even back then, as this was filmed back in the early 1970s. Of course, this is all in jest as the location is completely empty, and he's simply talking to himself in the audience for entertainment value. Now, this movie is a little overlooked as it's supposedly one of the first to use these one-liners extensively throughout the film. In this scene, he says, Thanks a lot, you cheating bastard, and then proceeds to peel out of the showroom, out through the window, and onto the street. And these cheesy one-liners would become much more popular as the action hero and sci-fi genres of the 1980s evolved. Here's a short clip taken from the movie Commando, which contains a few of these. Small spoiler here if you haven't seen it, so skip ahead about 30 seconds if you'd prefer. Oh. Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? That's what I made you. You did. I lied. So now you don't have a car. Now I do. What'd you do with Sally? I let him go. The late Bill Paxton was featured in several movies where his characters became well known for their respective one-liners, including this brief scene opposite Arnold in The Terminator. I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six-pack. So it only makes sense that James Cameron would pair these two up again in True Lies, with Paxton playing a small role as a rather unsavory used car dealer. Should we start up the paperwork? Let me think about it. 
Hold it for me for a day, okay? Hey, because it's you. Okay, sorry to digress. Back to Carvana. Critics will point out that it's foolish to buy a car without a test driver inspection, let alone do a simple walk around. We all know this guy by now. And he's going to be highly critical of your vehicle purchase unless you happen to come across a very well-maintained mid-90s Toyota Celica. I like this guy's mechanic advice, and he's certainly rewriting the YouTube playbook on effective scaling with this expansive choice of titles. Scotty's complaint with Carvana is just as mentioned. There's no way to examine the car in person. Anyway, the counterpoint to that, and probably the most important thing, there's a 7-day money-back guarantee with a stipulation on the distance driven. One thing that's important in cars and often overlooked is comfort. How well does one fit into it? This includes the controls, headroom, and legroom. It's hard to get a feel for that if you've never been inside the car as a driver. My biggest issue, I've noticed a few times where minor options were not listed. Now this is most common in German luxury cars, where you can order one-offs for almost every option, and some of these are just not observable. Carvana.com offers a clean and responsive website with many features to aid you in finding specific requests, ventilated seats, color, etc. Carvana also has a mobile app. Bottom line here is to know exactly what you're buying. Try to gather which options and features are included, especially for cars over 30 to 40K. If you live in a larger city, Turo and car sharing services allow drivers to rent high-end cars from their hosts. I mentioned that to not only get a feel of your fitment inside the car, but also do a driving comparison to do later for when you take delivery of your Carvana purchase. I do appreciate how they mention how many keys are included. Just to give a big picture here, certainly the business model ties in well with millennials. They like doing things the easiest way possible, they like buying stuff with an app. Some even prefer not to leave the house at all. Carvana has found success reaching older car buyers as well. They still have many markets to reach into. The main criticism is the lack of diminished returns in that growth by the limitations of a fragmented used car market. Some of the early criticism was directed towards the vending machine being a gimmick of sorts. Looks like the virus isn't quite the doomsday event that some were hoping for, but we're definitely feeling the aftershock effects of it right now on the economy. Here's one prophecy tweeted by trader Christopher Irons of QTR Research. Sounds legit. We're nearing the end of the first episode. The next one will go into Carvana stock in more detail. Look for the link below. I'll try to explain a few episodes out, some of what's going on, and more of who I am, DW, mystery stock trader guy. Maybe you don't want to invest at all, but you just want to watch. That's cool too. The pop culture and video clips were thrown in to kind of lighten the tone. Think of it as visceral movie trivia. Every once in a while, items are just thrown in there for subtle trolling. $95 million budget spent on this Cats movie just had to fit this in somehow. And that's really what this channel is about, entertainment and educational value. As stated before, not every video will follow the same format. We're not strictly going to cover stocks all the time. We may delve into some car topics relating to price and less frequently other finance subjects as well. That being said, drop a like and please subscribe to the Right Tar Media channel. Click the bell to turn on notifications for new videos. We'll try to get a new video out every week. It might be every other week. Feel free to post a comment or question below on Carvana or your experience using them to either buy a car or sell them yours. And be specific, make, model, miles, model year, and also be specific of any problems if you had them. If there's something that was inaccurate or wrong, feel free to clarify below. If you have a company or stock you're interested in that's under the radar, post it. Maybe it'll work in this format and there's a chance that a similar video could be done. And not something like Tesla, Amazon, or Google. Those have tons of coverage already and really have been done to death. There's a few companies on my watch list which feature cutting edge tech and some of these are not only changing lives but also saving them. And these are all likely due for an upcoming episode. This is DW signing off. Thanks for watching.